South Sudan achieved independence in 2011 after decades of fighting. The country has spent most of its short existence embroiled in conflict after an internal armed struggle escalated into a civil war that displaced millions of its civilians. Studies have shown that the conflict has had a severe effect on the mental wellness of children as unprocessed trauma has a devastating impact in many areas of their development. Many of the affected families fled to Uganda with most ending up in refugee settlements. Here, the authorities have created child-friendly spaces. Instead of having children loitering around the settlement, child-friendly spaces like this were put in place to have these children come together, to play together, eat together as a therapy to heal from trauma. Of caregivers and animators that we have at the child-friendly spaces supports us to mobilize the children to come to the child-friendly spaces for psychosocial support. So each of the child that this particular caregiver mobilizes to come at the child-friendly spaces becomes one of the child that particular caregiver is in charge of both at the child-friendly spaces and at the communities. Uh, we have sessions with the adolescent girls because as you, as you know most of these adolescent girls they are at the far risk of sexual abuse and are at the far risk of being married off. So we have sessions that some of the caregivers who are trained takes these girls through. For example one on how to protect themselves during their menstrual cycle or else in case it happens and this child is in, the, is in the public, what should this particular child do on how best to take care of him or herself? In these spaces, caregivers combine play therapy with other powerful ways to address the needs of hurt children. Den of life is a therapy for children. Now in den of life, you find that children who are not able to speak out, that children are not able to talk about the pain they go through. But when you give them paper to have a drawing, they would draw exactly what is going through in their life and you are able to address the challenges they have. The children are given a chance to resume their education, which was halted by the war. We enrolled this child to early accelerated education program. Now, accelerated education program has three levels. Level one takes children in P1, P2, P3. Level two takes P4 and P5. And level three takes P6 and P, P, P7. So if this child dropped out of school when he or she was in P4 and spent a year or more years before enrolling back in the education system, we put this child in level two. Now, Traumatized children often suffer from intrusive thoughts regarding their experiences and often relive the events as if they were continuing to occur in the present. Art has been vital in shedding off the haunting events. You find in even the drawings that they come out shows exactly what they are going through. It is one way we also identify the feelings of the children. It is one way we identify what children are going through in their mind. Okay? So, when you engage children in such an activity like arts activity, one, they come to bring out clearly the pain that they have in themselves in the different drawings. But these efforts to provide everything necessary in the child-friendly spaces have their challenges. The low level of volunteerism in the community, uh, always whenever we engage any community member in any of the activities we have in the settlement, there's so much high demand for motivation they have high demand for motivation, they have always they, they ask us for airtime, transport refund, and usually with the small basket we have for resources, we are not in position to budget for those things. Since the inception of child-friendly spaces, progress has been witnessed. Children have come out of their shells to speak comfortably about their experiences, which is the first step of healing. Olivia Komgisha, NTV.